Hi, my name is Joe Meredith, and I'm a clinical assistant professor at the Boise State University Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. And today I'm going to be telling you about some take home exams that I've been using in my organic chemistry classes this year that I think allow for a more authentic kind of assessment in an organic chemistry class. So before I tell you about what I'm doing now, I want to tell you a little bit of the history and kind of why I'm choosing to use these. Last year in March, when we switched to remote classes, I changed up the exam format and decided to give students take home exams because I was worried about their ability to take an exam at a specific time uh, through Blackboard or something like that, because I knew a lot of people were home with kids and, and had other complicating factors going on right then. So I gave them this take home exam, but it ended up that a lot of students in the class cheated on that exam, more than a third of the class. I got answers from each other or from websites like Chegg.com. And so that was really a negative experience and I didn't want to have a repeat. And so I instead tried giving them a Blackboard exam as their final, which was all multiple choice questions and it was timed, the questions were randomized, and we were proctoring. So I had some other folks from the chemistry department come into a Zoom session with me and all the students, and uh, we, we watched the students in breakout rooms while they were taking their exam. So overall, the students did really poorly on that exam, and uh, I felt that it was just a very stressful situation. It was stressful for me. I didn't like watching those students the whole time they were taking their exam. And I could tell from talking to them and from watching them that they didn't like it either. Uh, and I also was just really frustrated at, at how that format of exam uh, constrained my ability to write a lot of more, more interesting and uh, useful sorts of questions. And, and instead, uh, you know, gave questions like the one we can see here where folks are choosing the most reasonable structure, which really isn't a very authentic task for an organic, organic chemist to be doing, right? So a much more authentic task would be something involving drawing structures themselves, drawing curved arrows, drawing a mechanism, uh, planning out a multi-step synthesis, tasks that involve some creativity and, and some other skills they've been honing all semester. And, and all that's really lost in an exam with this format. So I didn't know what to do for the fall semester, but I wanted, I wanted some way to have them take uh, a take-home exam without, um, without these problems with cheating and uh, other issues. So one thing that I came up with was to give them more clear and precise instructions. So what we're seeing here are the first two pages of my most recent exam where uh, it's templated like a transparent assignment to give students a really clear idea of what they're doing, how they're supposed to do it, and how they're going to be assessed. Uh, I also include a, lo a lot of really specific language here about what they should do and what they shouldn't do, what resources are not allowed on this open book exam. For example, they can use a textbook, but, but no other resources on the internet. And in the past, I'd always been opposed to doing this because I felt like it was really focusing on something negative. But after reading and learning more about how to promote academic integrity in my class over the summer, I found that setting these really clear guidelines is a, a common recommendation and a helpful thing to do. So I wanna show you what some of these questions look like that are on these take-home exams. In general, they're pretty open-ended and divergent. So that means that students uh, come up with different answers from each other because there's lots of potentially correct answers. And I'm always surprised by the creative and correct answers they come up with that I didn't even think of. So they're pretty fun to grade in that way. Uh, the, the other thing I wanted to tell you is just kind of what, what, are, what tasks are the students completing on these exam problems? And, uh, you know, in general, they're, they're planning out syntheses, so they're using the reactions that we've learned in the semester or in the previous class in the sequence to, to put together uh, a synthesis for how to make this compound. Uh, or maybe they're proposing a reasonable reaction mechanism. That's another kind of problem they do. And I think both of these are the sort of problems that on a timed in-person exam tend to be very stressful 
because they're not the sort of tasks that an organic chemist would do with a time limit. They're the kind of thing that takes some time. You have to use your creativity and troubleshoot. And uh, so I, I think it's a lot more realistic and authentic for students to do these problems, but without a time limit so that uh, they really can do their best work. Another thing that I've been doing to promote student success on these exams is to make my calendar totally available to them for them to book meetings with me. In fact, my calendar is open to them all semester so that they can book Zoom meetings with me, but they tend to do it more on the weeks of exams. So on the left, we see a screenshot of my calendar on a regular week. On the right, a screenshot of my calendar during a week when students are taking their take home exam. And all of these little 30 minute meetings that are scattered throughout the week, those are meetings with students where they're asking me questions about their exam, showing me answers that they've come up with, and I'm giving them feedback. And what I've really found is, yeah, it, it takes a lot of time, uh, but it's the most valuable part of my semester is working with these students on their exams because uh, it's the part of the job that I always really like. And I bet that's true for lots of people listening, right? That the one-on-one -on -one interactions with students where they care about figuring something out and you're helping them to, to learn how to do it really is rewarding. Um, I also let students schedule meetings with me in the evenings. I have, you know, uh, during a regular semester, maybe I would have more things going on in the evenings, but that's not been the case. So I know a lot of them are working or have kids at home and, and that's, that's worked out well. So I also wanted to show you what the grading process looks like because, you know, this year we've, we're all dealing with a lot of new logistics and, and maybe seeing this side of it will be useful to folks. So I've been using this tool, gradescope.com, which is kind of like the Canvas speed grader, but has some differences and works really well for chemistry problems. I wanna show you just an example of what it looks like and like the workflow when I'm grading these exams. So it's gonna zoom me in right on this question that I wanna grade. I'm grading question 10, so it's just showing me that. I don't know whose exam I'm grading. And there's all these rubric items along the side this problem has a correct answer, so I'm just gonna mark it as correct by clicking number one on my keyboard. This problem has some errors. They have a step that just isn't gonna work, and they have another step that isn't going to work super well. In my rubric, I've marked down for them to look at the, box, the step that has a box around it and the step that has a star, and then I've given them some pretty detailed feedback about what won't work in, in some of those cases. And I really like this because it, it lets me give more detailed feedback than I could on a written exam that I was grading by hand because I would just get too tired of writing the same thing over and over. Uh, and so I really like that part of using this platform. It also gives me a way to hand exams back to students digitally so that they get them uh, immediately when I'm done grading and they can uh, see how they were graded and uh, uh, immediately without any kind of uh, logistics for handing back the exam. So overall, I feel like this has been a really big success. My amount of cheating in the class has gone way down. Both of these classes had 54 students, so we can actually compare the numbers of cheating incidents pretty well. Uh, basically, over the course of the whole fall semester with four take-home exams, I had uh, about a third as much as many incidents of cheating as I did on that one exam in the spring. I wish I didn't have those eight, but you know, overall, uh, I think it was a pretty positive thing. And the feedback I got from students about it was really, really positive, where I think the majority of students felt really grateful to be able to take an exam like this, where uh, they were really able to do their absolute best work and not have a stressful experience of, of a proctored exam or a timed exam. So uh, I hope you felt like this was a good use of your time. If you have questions for me or ideas for things that you think I, I might want to try, you've got feedback for me based on it, I'd love to hear about it. This is my email address. Um, I asked the conference folks to, to post these first two pages of my exam in case you might want to look at those instructions. Uh, or you can email me and I'd, I'd be glad to share them with you. Uh, thanks for was watching this video and have a good day.